Are you looking to compare prices for your brand new car? Well then, visit autodeal.com.ph, select the car that you want, and choose to request for a quote from our network of over 500 official dealer partners nationwide. Within minutes, you'll start receiving offers from the dealers you've selected. All that's left is for you to select the deal that's best for you. Get the best deal on Autodeal. It's been a minute since Toyota first introduced their most affordable expression of freedom, which was the Toyota Wigo. A decade later, we finally have the all new Wigo. And when I say all new, I mean all new. Because right off the bat, the front clip is extremely different from the previous generation. This obviously being the second generation. Now, this is an all new design language. Now, when I say design language, it might be a bit confusing because it's not as if the car speaks. In reality, it actually does speak volumes because if you look at other similar products from Toyota, such as, let's say, for example, the Toyota Corolla Cross or even the Vios, which is right beside it, you'll note that the front clip has a certain design. That design language is translated to this all-new Wego. Right off the bat, let's start with the front clip. It's an all-LED affair up and down on the car, which is really great. It's much wider. It looks like it's much more stable. And the wings up front are actually very nice because it gives a little bit more width to the automobile. It is tiny, and the more width that you have, it feels like it's much more stable, doesn't it? Now, when you move on to the side of the vehicle, you'll note, too, that there are new wheels on the automobile which look great. It looks beefier, it looks thicker. Again, it adds to the stability of the automobile. Wrapped in the 65 series tires, these are 14s. To continue down the side, you've got repeaters on the side mirror. Ground clearance is decent because you're looking at 160 millimeters, which is great enough to ferry you through some of the rubble that you might find on our streets. Wow, rubble, not even lubak or holes, but rubble and a little bit of water that tends to retain inside the city during the rainy season. Uh, you've got ventilated discs up front and drum at the rear. Now, normally at the rear, it's actually pretty standard for any automobile, but here on the Wego, there's actually a lot to talk about, believe it or not. Let's start with the width of the entire car. You've got this indentation here and wings at the bottom, again, to add to its width. And then, I like the fact that the tail lamps don't really match the automobile in the sense that they're actually much larger. Since the automobile is already small, I want it to be as visible as possible. Visible, too, is the LED third brake light found up on top. Then there's the fact there's this absolutely a cute little woody little spoiler. That may sound really, really bad, but if you get up close and personal to this thing, it's really quite adorable. I also like the fact that there are no visible exhaust ports on this automobile because there is it that you don't need it. It's only a one liter, but I'll get to the engine a little bit later. But the point is that no fake exhausts for an, an exhaust that it's not gonna use it anyway. I like it. Additions to the rear of the Wego, believe it or not, parking sensors. Yes, not only that, you've got a reverse camera. Yes, and not only that, in the previous generation, you needed to take the key to open the rear. Uh-uh, not anymore. All you gotta do is flip a button. It's like, it's like buttons on Levi's jeans. You just slide it in. Jack doesn't know what I'm talking about because he's way too young. In the rear, okay, this was sort of like a talking point between me and Jack. We were trying to figure out just exactly how much cargo space you have back here. Jack wanted to say 200, I wanted 300. We kind of met in the middle. I gave it to him at 250, he robbed me blind. I said, take it and go. So here in the back, you can obviously see Jack's camera bag, yes. But obviously a bike buying box won't fit because they, there's not enough space and the seats you'd have to fold forward. But I can put a bike buying box flat inside. However, if you take out the tonneau and since the opening is quite large, when you fold the seats, bike buying box is put inside, no issues whatsoever. Let's take it inside, shall we? It may not have a lot of toys, and I'm being generous there, because the truth is, it doesn't have any toys. It does have very tiny bottle holders on either door. It does have a bottle holder or a cup holder found in the center, but really, that's about it. There are no air vents back here. There are no charging points, but there are Isofix tethers. Huh? <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. 
Okay, so as you'd expect from most Uyghurs, it's not leather, obviously, but it's all cloth all around the automobile. These seats, as we showed you, they do come down so that um, you can load more things. But the most surprising thing about a Uyghur is just the amount of space that they seem to find from nowhere to be able to fit four large adults inside this automobile. I say four because a fifth, yeah, that, that might be a problem. But four large adults is easy. This is Jack's normal driving position. I'm sitting behind it and look at the amount of leg room that I have and yet still look at the amount of headroom that I still have. And if that's not enough for you, look at the amount of room that Jack has when he sits behind himself. I mean, he's not a sardine by any means at all, but just look at amount of headroom that he has leg room and whatnot. It's amazing. But honestly, that would wrap it up for the rear seats because there isn't much to talk about. There's a lot more when we go up front. Okay, so, jeez, Jack, how tall are you, man? Getting to my proper driving position now. Very easy, slides forward manually, manual tilt. Okay, CVT, as I mentioned, I like that. That's very nice. Uh, flat um, dashboard, I like that. You have analog gauges and a small digital chip computer, including your fuel consumption figures. You have buttons for your audio on your steering wheel. Speaking of your audio, this is I like because it's an eight inch touchscreen with both Android and Apple capabilities. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, it's got a reverse camera. Down below, you have your digital screen for your air controls. It's a digital control, but it's still obviously manual. And then your start stop is button is here on this side. As it was in the previous generation, it was on the left side. Uh, cup holders here, 12 volt socket found in the center. Little bit of a cubby hole. Cup holders, not very big, but at least there are. And then obviously they're mimicked on the doors itself. And then you've got your manual parking brake. The addition also, by the way, the cool, cool addition inside this automobile is this, a DVR, standard in all top-of-the-line models. So uh, it's a front-facing camera. Your uh, SD card goes in there. And then if something happens, you just press the Toyota logo right there, which is, it's lighting up right now. That's actually pretty cool. I like the fact that it's standard. Safety first. I like that. So really, uh, Jack and I are very cautiously optimistic about this automobile and yet excited at the same time. Allow me to explain as I bring you outside the car because it's quite warm. We are cautious because, well, the previous generation, uh, the NVH wasn't all that great. When you were on the highway past maybe 60, 80 kilometers per hour, you were kind of having to shout at one another already inside the car. Optimistic because, well, this isn't the first launch of Toyota this year. It's already the second, if I'm not mistaken, after right after the Xenix, and that was an exciting launch. So we're optimistic in the sense that they've made such great advances with the Xenix. We're kind of hoping that they made advances here too. Now, excited, obviously, because we want to be able to tell you what the fuel efficiency of this automobile is. By the way, if you're wondering, you are looking at a one liter, three cylinder gasoline powered engine that produces 66 horses and 89 Newton meters of torque mated to obviously a CVT. We don't know what the fuel consumption figures are for this automobile as of yet, but we're hoping that when we get it on a behind the wheel, we will be able to tell you. I can tell you that the car carries a total of 36 liters of fuel, which means if you top her up with today's prices at 57, this thing will cost you about that much more than 2,000 pesos to fully load, which is actually pretty awesome. The last thing I need to tell you is that it comes in a variety of colors. And if you head on over to autodeal.com.ph, you'll also find, apart from those colors, that the automobile starts at just 609,000 Philippine pesos and tops up at this top of the line model at 729,000 Philippine pesos. Head on over to autodeal.com.ph, try the get quote button because it's absolutely free, which can bring you that much closer to Toyota's most affordable expression of freedom, the Wego. The all new Wego. Forgot that.